Hey cousins, what's up? I was sitting there drinking my coffee because you can't work without coffee. And then I decided to do a survey. I wanted to get to know you a little better. And I asked, are you a CLT worker? Are you an entrepreneur? Do you have no income? Tell me a bit more about yourself. And to my surprise, I discovered that some of the cousins still didn't have jobs and were trying their luck at job interviews. And I thought, well, I've been a headhunter for a long time. I've hired a lot of people. So why not give a few secrets to this community that is so beautiful, so beautiful and so familiar, right? So in today's video, I've put together a few tips to pass on to you, tips that often nobody tells you, but which can help you a lot when it comes to getting a yes from the interviewer. Okay, so let's get to the video. First of all, if you've already been through all this, you don't need to do a job interview anymore, but you have friends in the same situation, that situation that you've already been through, and that for you sometimes isn't so important today, but that for them is everything, represents everything in their life. Share this video with them. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you don't already know about it to help me keep producing this kind of content, okay? So, speaking a little more about the interview, it's very tense because when we go for a job interview, we usually get very anxious, right? So the interviewer asks some very silly questions, right? Sometimes, what's five plus five? We answer avocado, you know? We get very lost in a job interview. And obviously, I'm not even gonna say that anxiety is a very negative factor. I'm not gonna teach you how to lose your anxiety, but I'm gonna start by giving you the first trick. And the first trick is to show yourself to be the solution to a particular task. So think about it. If a job vacancy has arisen, that person, that company is trying to solve a problem. But often we don't act like the solution to that problem. What do we do? We ask about the benefits of the job, about how much it pays, about the activities, and we talk about ourselves. We talk about everything but the problem the company wants to solve. But one thing the market has taught me is that when you make a consultative sale, you always get more results. So try to understand what the problem is that the company is trying to solve so that you can position yourself as the solution. In other words, we want to increase the reach of our social networks. Have you understood what the problem is? Now it's easy for you to say what the solution is. Oh, you need to increase the reach of your social networks? Well, that's great because I'm the perfect person for that. Not only do I have professional experience doing this and have already performed this function in such a company, achieving good results, but I'm also very familiar with it because I love working with it on a daily basis. So put yourself forward as a solution and never talk only about yourself, let alone the benefits that the job offers. The second tip is a very simple one, but one that requires some effort on our part. The tip is to show energy. If I were to produce a video here without putting energy into it, it would have a very catastrophic result, you know? And energy isn't about looking like an idiot. Energy is about speaking up, talking forward, gesturing. That's energy. And when you're interviewing, and I've done this several times, I can understand that a person with energy is a person who wants a lot, a person who is likely to have good results. Do you know when a person's eyes light up? Having energy is very similar. Third point, third trick, and perhaps the most beneficial of them all. The trick is to demonstrate value, not effort. Man, one thing I hate, I hate tremendously, is when people talk about how hard they work. Man, I was in a meeting recently. It must have been less than a week ago, really. I was talking to a bunch of people. We were introducing ourselves. And damn it, who you are, what you do. I don't know what. People just talked about my university degree, my MBA, my postgraduate degree, how many years I've worked in this area in this market. I don't know what. Man, effort is no use, no fucking use, cousins. Nothing. Dude, when you're at college or at work, I don't know what, and someone else has put in a lot of effort and spent sleepless nights and worked weekends and done everything possible, but that person didn't produce the same result as the other person who spent 30 minutes working, what was the point of that effort? Little or nothing, right? Little or nothing. So don't show effort. Show added value. So, it doesn't matter what your CV is. It doesn't matter what your background is. That's why 
when I hire people, I always look at their CV to filter them out. But the CV is never a determining factor for anything. On the contrary, the best professionals who have worked for me have generally come from the bottom, from the shop floor, usually earning very little and without a great education. So be careful. If you have a job interview, don't show that you want it too much or that you're trying too hard or that you need a job and that's why you're going to give it your all. Show the value you'll add to that company, the value you'll add to that role because imagine yourself on the other side. The person, the interviewer, is buying a product. Your product needs to deliver added value. So sell your added value, sell how you're going to contribute, not the effort you're capable of putting in. The next trick is the hero's journey trick. This is very cool and I highly recommend that you research it on the internet because the hero's journey is a way, almost a formula in fact, for you to tell a story, for you to tell the story of a protagonist. So if you study almost all superhero movies, the same thing always happens. You see the protagonist, the protagonist doesn't really want to leave his comfort zone. There's some great calling that makes him leave his comfort zone. Then there's a mission that he needs to solve. Then he goes through ups and downs. Then he manages to solve this problem. And then he comes back again as a person who has more knowledge with something to add to the world. So it's that thing about there being no hero if you don't have a villain. This happens a lot in superhero movies. And why am I talking about superhero movies? Because if you study how to put together the hero's journey, you can use it to tell your own story. So imagine the financial market. Instead of telling you that the solution is to invest well, I create the villain, which is the savings account that gives you a very poor return. And that's why you need the hero, who is the investment, who is the treasury, who is I don't know what. So it's very important that you understand this. Because when you create your pitch, you create your story. Short, you'll be able to present yourself to the interviewer in a much more efficient way. And it's very important that you tell the story in a way that captivates the interviewer. Because we think that the interviewer is not a person. A person who does the same thing as us. We think there's someone from another world. It's like the teacher at school or college. They seem to be a superior being, but they're not. He's a normal human being. So they'll be moved by your story if it's told well. There will be an identification. What is identification? Identification is when you talk about something that the person on the other end usually thinks, gee, I went through that too. Look at that. So this earns you a lot of points. You know when you're in an interview and the interviewer says that you used to go to such and such club and you say, wow, me too. And he says, really? That's great. So it's a mutual thing. That's what the hero's journey will do to you. The next trick is one that doesn't apply exactly to interviews, but it does apply to dynamics. You know when there's that crowd before you with a dynamic, which is a group of people who, instead of you doing an individual interview, have a bunch of people and the interviewers taking notes, getting you to work, doing some cases and everything? This is a dynamic, and there's a technique that works in every dynamic. And nobody had ever told me about it before I started working in the field to understand how it worked. And after I started applying it, I've never failed to pass a dynamic in my life. And I remember doing more than 30 dynamics at the time. I've never failed a dynamic. And the main point about dynamics is this. We make the very common mistake of thinking that when we're in a group, we always need to be the leader and we need to coordinate everything that happens. We need to consolidate everything. We get out the paper and start writing things down. But when we're in a dynamic, what we need to do at least once is this. Fuck, man, it's true. No, no, you're right. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Once. If you do this once in the dynamic, the interviewer will take note of it and give you several points. This counts for a lot in your favor. Because after all, in the workplace, nobody likes an arrogant person who's always right, right? So think about it. This technique is very valuable. And if you have a chance to do it in a job interview, do it. It will give you a lot of points. It will humanize you. There will be an identification and it will seem easy to work with you. And the last tip is to study the company's dress code. There's nothing better than being identified when you arrive. I remember one time I went through a process many years ago, a gum and candy company, I can't remember the name, but it's purple, right? And I remember a friend who did this process with me and she wore purple. Look how cool, she went all out in purple. So black pants and all, but a purple shirt.
And then she got a lot of points for that. I remember that the interviewers cited her as a positive example. So there's nothing better than going to Google and not wearing a suit and tie. You know, try to study the dress code of the company you're going to visit because this will never work against you. But sometimes it can give you a lot of points to get ahead of other people, right? I hope you enjoyed today's video. Share these tips with your friends who haven't got a job yet or for you who are there in a company but aren't very happy, right? So I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye.